Yo, what's up? Uh, check it out, check it out. So, coming back with a new video. I today wanted to talk about uh, the concept of Warren Ashram. Now, you might have heard about the Beatles and how they went to the ashrams. And the hippies went to the ashrams and made their own ashrams. What is an ashram? Ashram is like a uh, way of living. But not for an individual, but for all of society. So it's like uh, a form, like what in my other series of talks where I'm talking about the millennium, it's called a social form. That's basically what a ashram is. So um, according to the Vedas, which are probably the oldest books, where Hindus believe to be the oldest books in existence, and they used to be an oral language uh, before it was a written down in books. So um, this was something that uh, the young boys in the priesthood would learn starting out very young and they would memorize whole book, all books of them and uh, they would spend years training and stuff. So um, anyway, so uh, yeah, so there's, uh, it's basically the uh, uh, social form and Varnashram Dharma I think it's called. Um, so Varna means caste or class or um, category and ashram means these four um, ways of living and dharma is religion basically you know? so the class and the um, level of religious society In Hindu religion. So, uh, what are these uh, ashrams? So, there's four ashrams, Varn ashrams. Yeah, Varn. Yep, it's too light. Alright, um, so, anywho, what I wanted to say was that um, there's four different castes of Varnashram Dharma and it's basically very similar to the four different aims of Hindu uh, li or life according to Hindu uh, theory and that's the theory of the um, Dharma, Artha, Karma, Moksha Dharma being the rules of conduct of society uh, Artha means uh, wealth acquisition and pleasures, oh, no sorry uh, the third one is Kama which means enjoying life and pleasures of life and fourth one is Moksha or freedom from life I guess or society or something or just from um, this enlightenment the pursuit of enlightenment and liberation from the bondage of life I guess so uh, those are the four stages of life, uh, or the four aims of life, but they're also, uh, you can see them in the four stages of life, which is Brahmacharya, then uh, is um, Grasta Ashram, then is Vanaprastha, and then is uh, Sanyasa Ashram. So uh, basically the four stages of life is like the first 20, the first 40, the 60 and then 80 years of life what you should be doing so in the first 20 years of life you're supposed to be in the celibate stage of life the uh, student stage of life and that means that you basically are focused uh, well actually first you uh, they say in the same book that the mother should be able to raise the child for the first five years and take care of the child and everything and, and while the child is up to five years and then at the age of five years, the dad, when the child turns five, the dad takes over control of the son, a child and raises it for the next three, four years uh, until they can afford to send him to a school, you know. And um, then I guess the man is kind of free from taking care of the child physically. And uh, so is the mom. And the child is basically in these uh, little colleges getting trained for the future 
society, you know, uh, a job in a society. And um, during this period, celibacy is important. A simple lifestyle is important because the struggles of life, uh, harsh circumstances and harsh environments is how knowledge is obtained. Um, because if you have all the pleasures, you just want to enjoy yourself and you get lazy. But if the harshness is there, then you stay on your toes, basically, and uh, are more aware as an individual. Uh, your mind is more active, basically. <clears throat> so that's the first stage of life. It's said to be uh, it's said to ha be minimum sixteen years for females and um, uh, to twenty four to forty for males, and for females they can be celibate till twenty four if they can handle it, and then if they can handle it, they're supposed to be uh, the more celibate longer you're celibate, the more uh, evolved you are as a uh, marriage partner, I guess. Because you have self-control. Um, so that was the interesting thing I read in that book. Uh, next up, uh, I also heard about, what was the second? Uh, Grust Ashram. So then you go into Grust Ashram, which is married life. And here, enjoyments are uh, recommended, you know. Uh, and I haven't really read it recently, so I should go back. But um, still, they still recommend sexual moderation. And... Um, only having like four partners, or sorry, uh, sex once or twice a month and stuff like that. And um, not living in the same room with your partner. That's another Hindu rule. <laughs> uh, and what else? Um, certain diet. Now the diet restrictions are lifted, but and different uh, dietary uh, suggestions are provided for this stage of life. And then in the third stage of life, it's where the they start separating, you know, uh, the man and the wife, or they live together, I think, until they're ready to separate in the fourth stage. And in the fourth stage, they're again celibate. And uh, at this point, they just serve society, and they're totally um, dedicated to that. In the third stage, they're kind of living in the forest, getting away from the a grid, so to speak, and uh, thinking and having fun and so forth, and you know, getting connected back with nature, and therefore themselves. So uh, that's the four stages, brahmacharya, and then uh, married life until about 50, and then uh, they say forest dwelling, and uh, finally sannyas, or uh, serving uh, like Mother Teresa or Mahatma Gandhi kind of lifestyle. So. Uh, that's the uh, four stages of life. And also, let me add that uh, you can go from the first stage to the fourth stage or any stage to the fourth stage if you, if you really feel, if you want to, if you really feel called to and you're ready to handle it. Most people uh, can't really handle the truth even about themselves. So how can they handle the, f the dedication of life to God and society? You know, That's uh, only for the few... Many are called, few are chosen. Um, so, uh, Sanyas Ashram. And then before that, Vanaprastha. Hakuna Matara. <laughs> uh, that kind of lifestyle, I think, is what Vanaprastha suggests to me. Um, because you're just trying to get a new pattern going from the old ways of being. All right, so the four stages of um, life, that's me. Peace out.